Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and our revisitation of the Game Engines by Programming Language series continues. I first did this back in 2018. I figured it was time for a reset. I have already covered off Python game engines that are out there, as well as C++ game engines. We're going to go through other programming languages, such as C Sharp, JavaScript, TypeScript, etc. Let me know which ones you're interested to see coming up in the comments down below. But today, what we are going to look at today is Lua. Now, Lua is a very popular scripting language. With the rise of mobile game development, it was was like probably the most popular for a while there. And some of the game engines that came out from the early iPhone and Android days are still around with us and still powered by Lua. Now Lua is designed to be very easy. It's, it's aimed at like non-programmers. It was originally aimed at like scientists and engineers, etc. that don't necessarily know programming. But the other thing about Lua is it's very easy to embed it in other languages. It's also very easy to generate bindings for it. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a combination of game engines, game frameworks, as well as bindings, and then a couple of miscellaneous at the end. Now, since Lua is so ubiquitous, you're going to find there are things I missed from this list. If you have suggestions, do let me know. I am maintaining an article that is linked down below of all of the things here, all the engines, etc. So if I miss one, I will definitely add it to that article, but we're at least going to get the biggies here. So let's start things off with one of the most popular right now, and that is Love. Yes, you could argue all you need is Love. Now, Love is a framework for creating games. It is super obscenely simple to get going with. As you see here, you want to draw something on screen, three lines of code right there. That's it. You want to load something there, five lines of code to do it and then to, to load it and to draw it. Playing a sound four lines of code. Super simple. Now, the reason why Love is super popular right now is Bellatro. Now, I actually did a full tutorial series on learning the Lua programming language and to use the Love framework. Now, I did it a number of years ago, but frankly, things don't change that much. So if you want, check out that series. Love, though, it's just great to work with. It's super simple, super easy, very beginner friendly. Uh, and as you saw, used to make Bellatro, so it is capable. Now, next up, we have the Fold. Now, I am a huge fan of the Fold. If you're a regular this channel, you know I have cheerleaded it quite a bit. Uh, over time. Originally developed in-house at King. Uh, they eventually open sourced it out. And then since then, it has really taken off. And then now we have it available. It's got a full editing environment. This is a full-blown game engine, primarily aimed at 2D. There is 3D support, but most of the tooling is aimed at 2D. And you're going to notice here, lots of support here, including PS5, PlayStation 4, uh, I think Xbox. I don't know if they just haven't updated it yet. And all your major platforms, Switch, mobile, you name it. Plus, it's got a full editing support. And at the heart of it, is the Lua programming language. Lately, they've been adding bindings for other programming languages as well, uh, but Lua is the heart of the default game engine. If you've never checked out the Fold before, I just highly recommend you do it. It's got incredibly polished tools. The way it does things are a little bit different than other engines, but again, one I highly recommend checking out. Uh, it has source available and a completely free game engine to use. Next up, we have Solar 2D. Now, Solar used to be called something else, and it was called Corona. And unfortunately, the name Corona became a little... Uh, unfortunate, even though I believe it just means something like king in Spanish. But uh, yeah, the Corona SDK was uh, an unfortunate name because of that. So it has been rebranded to uh, Solar 2D. This used to be a commercial uh, game engine or framework for creating mobile titles. Uh, it is now open source. It is multi-platform available on a number of different environments, mobile, desktops, and so on. Uh, it has an editor for working with and the tools. Again, now it is all entirely open source under the MIT license and has a very vibrant community behind it. So again, this used to be called Corona. Now it is called Solar 2D. Now another one from that era is called Gitteros. Now there used to be again, Gitteros and Corona used to be like these two paid options, super popular for making mobile titles. Uh, and the market kind of fell out of that. So they've both kind of gone towards open sourcing. So Gitteros is now an open source project as well. As you can see uh, from the screen that just slipped by a second ago, you do have an editor where you can create your code directly inside of it. And of course, your programming language is um, Lua. And then on top of that, you see a number of major platforms are supported as well. Uh, now we're getting a little bit into the binding side of things. Now there's going to be more bindings than I mentioned, because I mentioned earlier on Lua is incredibly easy to, to embed in other things. It's also very easy to create bindings for. Uh, but one of the C++ or C frameworks out there that has support for it is Raylib. I've been a fan of Raylib for a very long time, even though I forgot to mention it in the C or C++ video. Yeah, that was dumb. Uh, but yeah, definitely we have Lua support, as you can see right there. So there are first class bindings for it. Uh, Raylib is a very easy to work with framework. So it's a good introduction. If you want something a little bit more complicated than love, uh, Raylib might be a good pickup there. Uh, we also have SDL. Now SDL3 was recently released and unfortunately there are no SDL3 language bindings yet, but there are Lua bindings for SDL2. So right now, three, no bindings, 
but I do imagine they will be coming soon. So right now, if you want to work with SDL though, uh, SDL super popular library for doing uh, input window management, uh, audio, drawing things on screen, that kind of stuff. Lots of games use SDL, including um, this is one of the more essential libraries inside of Steam. Uh, so uh, SDL definitely is a, a library worth checking out. Another one that's popular from back in the day, same kind of thing as Raylib and SDL. We have Allegro uh, and Allegro has Lua bindings available as well. Uh, I was going to mention uh, SFML, but their bindings seem to be a little bit more uh, third party and a little bit less integrated. So I did not talk about them, but there are a number of 2D frameworks out there that have these Lua bindings available. Now we're moving into the world of 3D. Now this one I recently did a video of and it is called Lover and Lover is inspired by love. It's not really built on love, but it is for creating 3D applications. But you can see here from the way that code works, it makes doing 3D work or VR work uh, pretty much as easy as love makes 2D work. Uh, it is, again, very similar uh, in style to uh, the code that you would create using love, but obviously aimed at 3D. Again, I just did a video about Lover. Uh, it is a very impressive framework, very uh, easy to get started with. It's probably one of the easiest uh, code-based 3D game development frameworks that's available out there. So if you want to go 3D, this one is worth checking out. Now, if you want to stick to love though, you do have an option in the form of Minori. Now this is an entirely Lua library uh, that's written on top of love. So this is a love library that gives you 3D rendering support. So it's good, you can surprise your screen graph, the ability to load 3D models and so on. And it works with love 11.4 and higher. So this is technically a library for uh, love that's built in Lua, but it does things like loads 3D models, creates 3D scenes and so on. So if you want to work with love, but you want to add 3D to it, Minority is definitely one worth checking out. The only thing that I'm a little cautious about hasn't been an update in five months. So I don't know what's up there. And next up we have O3DE. So one of the language options inside of O3DE is Lua. They also have their own visual scripting language, plus you can use C++, uh, but Lua can be used to do all of your game logic inside of O3DE. Now, if O3DE sounds new to you, well, it's not. O3DE used to be called Lumberyard, although to be honest, since Lumberyard became O3DE, it's been a complete rewrite for the most part. And way back, Lumberyard used to be Crisis or CryEngine. So it's uh, it's an engine that's been around for a very long time. It is open source now. There is a large community behind it. And again, one of the major scripting languages for uh, game logic is Lua. Next up, we have Wicked Engine. And this one lives up to his name. Like, this one is one of the most impressive game engines I've seen from like a small development team. Uh, and it has full Lua scripting support. It also has C++ scripting support. Uh, Maybe C sharp too, but you can see here, uh, no, just Lua. So easy Lua scripting here. This is one of those ones where if you go ahead and check it out, you will be just amazed by the amount of features that this actually has. So Wicked Engine lives up to the name. It is Wicked. It's also free and open sourced. And again, game logic can be written using the Lua language. After that, we have Spring Engine. Now this is a C++ based RTS game engine for creating games like Total Annihilation, etc. Uh, it also has Lua as a language. Now, weird thing is the, there's, there's not a lot of community facing stuff for Spring. Uh, but it's been around quite a while. If you want to create a RTS in the vein of like Total Annihilation, Command and Conquer, that kind of stuff, and you want to use the Lua programming language, Spring is an option you have. And then we have Game Guru. I went actually technically with Game Guru Max here, but Game Guru fits this list as well. These are pay to play, super simple to work with, 3D game engines. They come with a ton of uh, content out of the box. Some people like look down on them because you do get a very uh, specific looking game when you are done with it. But at the end of the day, it's also super easy in terms of uh, game development. Uh, and on top of that, it's got a huge set of tools and assets to get you up and going. Those are traditionally tripping boards for it. And you can use the Lua programming language to do your logic. Now, Lua, I think, was a little bit more front and center in Game Guru before Game Guru Max, because Game Guru Max has their visual logic system now. Uh, but you can also create your own extensions using the Lua programming language with Game Guru Max or Game Guru. These are commercial. They're on sale all the time on Steam, by the way. So never pay full price. Uh, and we have Overlord. Now, this is an open source game engine that uses the Lua programming language for um, you know your, your game logic side of things. Uh, I got to be honest here. I have never checked out Overlord, I don't think. It does still seem to be actively developed, and it actually seems 
uh, pretty cool. Um, it's one of those things I'm going to have to add into my future to check out because you've got a full editing and world building environment. Uh, it looks very Unity-esque in its feature scope. Uh, and again, it started life as a graduate project, but it's just been, they've been building on it and on it and on it. And the key thing here is it does have Lua scripting. So, uh, this one has been around for a number of years. You see here like five plus years or six years here. But, uh, again, it's been a couple of months since there was an update that always freaks me out a little bit. Uh, but it is an interesting looking project. And again, uses Lua as the programming language and it is MIT licensed. So this is one of those ones I'm going to have to look at in a little bit more detail, probably in a future video. So I can't tell you how good it actually is, but it is an interesting one and uses Lua. And then we've got Leadworks or Leadworks, Leadworks, I guess that would be. Uh, this is another game engine that is available up on Steam. It is a commercial game engine. It is also on sale all the time. Uh, combination, I think the pro version of it, you can use C++, but in the, the straight up version, you do your game scripting with Lua. By the way, the advanced version also still has Lua support. Uh, this one's getting a little bit older. The developer behind this one has moved on. He's now doing Ultra Engine, which I do not think has Lua support yet, but I'm not 100% not certain on that one. But Leadworks, uh, again, available on Steam, full functioning, full, uh, like even got an editing environment. As you can see, there is a full editor for it. Um, and yeah, that's uh, using Lua programming language for its client side scripting. And then we're getting a little bit tangential or on the edge or whatever, but really I would be remiss if I did not mention that, uh, you know, the Roblox has uh, Lua support. Roblox is probably the most popular Lua based game out there. It's weird. We're getting into this world where games and game engines are kind of getting a little blurry or where the line is. Uh, you can create games and make money using Roblox. So it's definitely uh, something that developers should be aware of. And at the heart of it is the Lua programming language. So definitely one that should be on your radar if it is not already. Now, in a very, very similar vein to Roblox, you also have Core. Uh, it's kind of a very similar setup. The big thing about Core, uh, it is actually built on top of Unreal Engine. Uh, you can create games using it. Obviously, your games are created using the Lua programming language, or it would not be on this list. Uh, I don't actually know what's going on with Core right now. It came in like a super momentum behind it, but I haven't heard a lot about Core since. So uh, another option out there, again, it's that blurring line between game and game engine. And now I'm going to blur it even more. And we're getting now into the world of fantasy consoles. And this is an area where Lua is super popular to be used as a scripting language. The entire idea behind fantasy consoles is basically to create these virtual uh, restricted game machines, kind of like, you know, maybe Game Boy-esque computing power, but present it using, um, you know, modern sensibilities, it makes it easier to get in. So you, you've got these more focused, easy game development machines. And one of the more popular ones out there is Pico 8. Now, this is the only one I'm going to talk about today, but Pico 8 has Lua as its programming language, but there are a number of other fantasy consoles that also use the Lua programming language that you want to be aware of. So that is another world you can get in with Lua game programming is these fantasy consoles that exist. And then we get into another uh, kind of, uh, I don't know how to put this way. It's still a game engine. It is a full code editing environment and it's called Codia. And ironically enough, it's also one of the, the first three or four things I ever covered on YouTube on Game From Scratch. So years and years and years ago, I did a hands-on with Codia and I love it. It's a great way to just create games on an iPad. So it's a full iPad development environment and game engine. And as you can see from the script here in the background, it is Lua based. Now, of course, your catch is you need to have an iPad. Uh, so uh, you can use it to publish games, I think, to other platforms, though. Uh, and you can basically create your games directly on an iPad, play them on your iPad. But I do think you can publish them out as well. So Kodia is in that weird space, kind of in this miscellaneous category. So this, ladies and gentlemen, that is a number of popular games, game engines, uh, game frameworks, etc., that are all using the Lua programming language. Like I said, I probably missed some, and I do have a linked article down below. So if I missed one that you recommend, do let me know, and I will add it to the list. I'm only adding things that have been updated in the last couple of years, though. So if it looks like it hasn't been updated in a few years, I am not including it. Also, let me know in the comments down below what language you would like to see covered next. So again, we've covered Python. We have covered C++ and C, and now we have covered Lua. So let me know what you're interested in next. Let me know what you think of the series. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.